Well, it's time now to take a look at what's making this Friday's newspapers around the world with our press reviewer, Nicholas Rushworth. Hello, Nicholas. Hi, Lorna. Right, so you're going to start off with uh, that national day of mourning in Belgium that we were, of course, talking about in the news bulletins after that uh, dreadful coach crash in Switzerland. Well, of course, it's a, it's a every parent's nightmare, isn't it? You send your children off, perhaps for the first time, to go on a holiday trip, a skiing trip in this case, and then you never see them again. And in this case, most of the school children who died were from the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium. So I turned to the press there, and the front page of the Het Latza News shows photos of some of the victims, and there you can see one young mourner in tears as she holds a flower. Now, the paper is devoting 14 pages of coverage to that and um, much of that is basically about the grief that people are feeling. Now another Dutch speaking paper in Belgium today, Morgan, is filling its front page with a cartoon of an empty classroom and uh, the news editor in Morgan says that um, there is no satisfactory answer to the question why my child? So of course a day of emotion, a national day of mourning for the the whole of Belgium and the Belgian Prime Minister Elio Di Rupo has said that today the country is weeping for its children. Okay. Well that crash uh, of course took place uh, in Switzerland. It was on Tuesday evening in a motorway tunnel in the south of Switzerland. So what are the Swiss press saying about it? Well the French paper Le Temps is headlining that there are no explanations at this point. There you can see Le Temps and Désarroi sans réponse, no answers. Police have said they didn't believe that the driver, one of two drivers, was speeding. There was no problem with the bus itself. Now, another paper, Le Matin in Switzerland, says the theory that the driver may have been distracted by helping a teacher put on a CD uh, is not being taken up. There you can see the headline there, La piste du DVD sous des gonfles. So that line of inquiry about putting on a DVD is being put to one side. Swiss police say it is speculation. Well, uh, we're going to move on from that story now to Syria because the British newspaper, The Guardian, has uh, had a bit of a scoop this week. They've been publishing emails, uh, leaked emails, purportedly written by uh, President Bashar al-Assad of Syria uh, and his wife, British-born wife, of course, uh, Asma. Well, for the follow-up on that, I turn to the, today's edition of The Guardian and the cartoonist Steve Bell this Friday is comparing Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to none other than Voldemort <laughs> that in Harry Potter with the headline there, Harry Basher and the Deathly Hallows Part 3. I suppose that's Happy Basher, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, comment writer Peter Bowman, still in The Guardian, says the danger for the Syrian opposition with these leaked emails is that they may only make Assad seem more human. Mm -hmm. And I quote from that piece, there is no cunning plan revealed to smuggle in weapons of mass destruction, only evidence of how Assad got around US sanctions to buy items from iTunes. <laughs> Assad, it turns out, likes the British rock band New Order. Bowman's arguing if the Syrian opposition hoped to make Assad seem more monstrous, then they failed. Now, the Daily Telegraph is also um, looking at that story. It's spoken to Assad's father-in-law, Fawaz Akras, a Harley Street cardiologist who lives in London. Now, he's comparing the Syrian uprising to last summer's riots in, in, in England. Can you believe that? Mm. Unbelievable comparison. Um, and he's asking why David Cameron didn't deploy troops as Assad has done. And to wrap up, I'm going to stick with the UK. Another British paper, The Independent, has got this cartoon by Dave Brown. It's showing Assad in his palatial office with a smartphone and the horrible, awful joke there, let them eat tweet cake, I should say, <laughs> a reference to let them eat cake by Marie Antoinette. So um, horrible um, joke there. Yeah, indeed. Well, thank you very much, uh, Nicholas, for taking us through uh, a few articles from today's international press. Well, it's time now to get a recap.